You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. I'm Alex Perez in Southern California. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. and San Antonio. San Antonio. And we're going to do... Oh, it's Bert. It's, yeah, we're going to do... It's Bert and Ernie. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not it's Alex and Mike. It's Bert and Ernie. It's Bert and uh, Ernie. <laughs> tonight, Alex, we have a really unusual situation. We have an... We have a What's that? Desmadre. It's not a relajo anymore. We're not we have a relajo. Desmadre. Relajo turned into a desmadre. Desmadre. <laughs> we have we have a a a ver ver veritable cornucopia of confusion. <laughs> we have an enigma. An, an enigma. It's called Ravel Spirits. Ravel. Now, Alex. I, I can't get into their website, but you can. This is technically say much. Technically speaking, this is an agave spirit. Right. Um, why? Why? Because you say it comes from the state of Morelos. Morelos. Which, so which, it's not one of the five. It's not one of the five uh, denomination of origin for for tequila. However, uh, it is made with uh, with blue agave. Blue Weber agave, right? Blue Weber agave, and um, I can't, like I say, I can't get into their website, but there is a press information on these folks. And Alex, you said previously in our in our discussion on the the what was it, the Golden State of cocktails? Yes, right. You said that they were there. They were there. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to um, to meet with them. They actually sponsored some 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 lunch. Oh, no kidding! Oh, wow. Was, which was nice. Yeah. But uh, that's the that's the thing. When you go to some of these events, there's so many things to see and and taste, and you can't. Sometimes you just can't get to everything. No, you just go for. Your I was meals. running back and forth between the main hall and and, and um, the classes, the, the exhibits, right? and then the classes. So I I completely missed them. Hey, but that's okay. Luckily, hey. they didn't miss us. We've had these samples for a while. They were very very forthcoming with the uh, information. And this is a safety pour bottle, um, so we're gonna we're gonna do this in in Riedel's. Um, I like the fact that it's got bubbles, Alex. Yes, I, I do it's like the fact bubbles. that it has bubbles. Love the bottle. I like the shape of the bottle. Yeah, it's it's very elegant. It's okay. it's not common. We haven't seen this bottle like this. Um, it's it's 80 proof. Yeah. Um, so it's 40 ABV. And it's triple distilled. Triple distilled. Triple distilled, forty percent alcohol, eighty proof. Now they're calling this uh, uh, apparently from the website uh -huh. or from uh, uh, from the information that, that we have. They're calling it the the beverage was called an Avila, as an Avila is a, a surname, as far as I know. But um, technically, it's it's out of the growing region and out of the denomination of origin, so uh, we have to call it an agave spirit, but it is um, according to to the press information that I see here uh, it, it's owned by two folks out of um, uh, out of the the Twin Cities area in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is right there that's unusual and I guess they used to be in the music business um, and I, you know, one thing led to another, and next thing they know, they're 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 doing uh, ultra premium Avila. So I guess that's what they're calling it, ultra premium Avila. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is sold in 750 liter bottles, uh, 750s, yeah. and ranges in price from seventy dollars to one hundred and thirty dollars per bottle. And this would be in the in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. So, wow. uh, which I believe is a control state. Control so state. Like this in Avila, just like you would call the tequila, tequila, sotol, a mezcal. A mezcal, so this is considered an Avila. Interesting. Well, it's got a really interesting nose. <sighs> a neat nose. Wow, that's kind of a fruity nose there at the bottom, Alex. Yeah, it's got fruit. I even got a little, just a, just a hint of yeast. Yeah, I do get the yeast. You're but, right. but it's just it's just it's fleeting. It's a fleeting thing of yeast thing. But, you know, it's a whiff. It's a whiff thing. Very interesting. It's got a it's got a fruity nose. It's, it's got, got a really 
Yeah, it's got pleasant fruit, nose. Real earthy to me. Not not the not the green, but but uh, and which it's not digital, but earthy. Yeah, and it's not earthy like it is in a matitan. It's really different. Yeah, it's more of more towards sotol, more towards yeah. It's not volcanic. It's in mezca, but more yeah, yeah, more 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 towards a sotol. Interesting, and that interesting because it's supposed to be 100 percent blue river agave. Yeah, but again, this is this is grown in another state, so we know that if uh, when you talk about terrar, terroir. Bro. I'm still trying to get over the nose. Wow, completely mouth different in the mouth, different in the palate. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. It's very interesting, huh? Mm. That's um. We like to make a lot of noises. Well, it's the you know <laughs> my retro nasal, and I I can't. I've never had it. It's different. Very unique. Yeah. It's very bright. Really fresh. Um, there's not much of a finish. You know, it's not. A, it's not a like a deep, warm, fuzzy or anything. This is a, again, it's a triple distilled. I did get some spiciness on the on the on the back end, up on the. Actually, interestingly, up on the, the um. The top of my palate, up on the uh, the roof of my mouth. Hmm. I'm still trying to place that retro nasal. I, I don't know if that's green, or or earthy. It's earthy and green. Um, it's a little green in there. I can see it. I can taste, smell it now. I should say. But what a different spirit. So this is considered an Avila. Hmm. Yeah, it's green. It's like cucumbers and, yeah, and but definitely vegetal. Yeah, um, you you could say it a little bit briny, maybe. Yeah. Not a lot, but a little bit. Kind of like I want to say olives, but no, not really. Yeah, I think some olives. It's, I get some of that in the the really yeah. top, very top of the of the um, the glass. It's a little sweet too. Not a lot, but it's a little sweet. I think really, that's your sweetness. Really unusual. It's not like anything I've ever had that wasn't smoked. You know what I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. almost as if it's a. I guess it would be considered a mezcal as well, but it's um. It's um. It's completely different. Yeah, it's not like any terroir I've ever had. And I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. I. I think it's really cocktail forward. I think this thing would never get lost in a cocktail. Um, I mean, they, you know, some agaves from different <coughs> states taste different. Like, for instance, Herman Gonzalez, when he was with Chinaco, would take uh, agave from Tamaulipas and he would he would blend it with with Highlands agave from Jalisco, <coughs> and and and. To tone down apparently whatever gaminess, or or you know to, to give it a, fl a different flavor profile and in the end product, and and this one doesn't. This is this is really what you're getting is how it's grown in in Morelos. This is this is a uh, yeah. This is really uh, I would think very um, uh, cocktail forward. Yeah, uh, it's um, it pair. You know what. It, if you need to pair this with um, with some herbs, that's that's what it is. It's it's, it's like rather rosemary. herbal. Yeah, pairing it with some so a cocktail with the rosemary in it or something. You can tell by the look on my face. I'm really confused. I've never had anything <laughs> like this, and and it's not it's not bad. It's just different. Oh, it's I, different. I can't place it. Um, you know, you you, think you we, tasted we, everything. But, yeah, typically we do uh, uh, tequilas and mezcalas and and sotols. You know, we've had our share of, of really good sotols, and this is not. It's got a sweet nose, you know. Uh, the some t a whiff 
of of uh, you know of yeast. Not a whole lot, but. So this is Ravel. Let me let me look it up again. Ravel. Ravel Avila. Avila Avila, right? Yeah, Ravel Avila, Ravel Spirits. Yeah. Um. And apparently, in in the Twin Cities area, it's uh, their Blanco would probably this this Blanco would go for about seventy dollars. If but I I'm I'm sure that's a control state, so your pricing would be a little bit different. Yeah, your pricing may vary, right? There's an online store selling the the añejo for a hundred and nine dollars. Yikes! Regular one hundred twenty nine bucks. That's their suggested the retail. So this is from the Morelos. Region we mentioned that already. I think. Yeah, and it's a. Trying to, it trying must to, be a, a small batch. Is this a, is this um is he a? Uh, I guess at this point he would be considered small batch because we're not sure how widespread this, this spirit is. And uh, the the good thing is you saw it in L.A. So you know at the uh, the cocktail conference. Yeah. Um. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you, man. Um Do you like it? I um I'm going to have to sit with it cuz I'm not real sure and I'm not and I'm not a big cocktail guy. So I can I can see where this would work great in a cocktail. <laughs> not having, you know, there there's a lot of stuff that the website claims, for instance, that this is an organic product. But yet, there's no USDA seal, and it's not, you know. So you can say it's organic. They, they, you know, you can believe that they're, they're, they're not using, f uh, uh, they're not using pesticides and things like that, and that could be the case. But we don't know that, so we're not going to claim that it's organic. But I, I like. First of all, I like the the, the look. The presentation is very nice and sleek. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Alex. Do you like it? What do you think? I mean, we don't have we don't have an agave spirits category because it is made with blue agave that we know for sure, and it does come out of a state outside of the denomination of origin. So technically, it has to be called agave spirit. Right. Triple distilled, which is unusual, um, and eighty proof. What's, I mean, what's what's our verdict? Do you think do you think there's a market for something like this? I, I think so. I don't know about the price point. Yeah, that price point is steep, man. But again, this this is probably a small batch. We don't know anything about the distillery. No, we've not seen any pictures. We we don't. You know, there's very little information on. I can't even get into their website. I know Alex can, but I can't for some weird reason I have no idea uh, so I'm going by you know the information on the uh, on the press release that that um, I'm looking at came out in October of 2014 so we know they've been out for a while I mean they've been yep. they've been in existence for at least a couple of years um, yeah I'm trying to find more info on them um, there's well, not yeah, even even when you Google Old these Town folks. Tequila has them. <laughs> What's that? Old Town Tequila has them. Of course he does. Old Town is selling the Añejo for $109. Uh, they they are on Twitter. Uh, they are on Facebook. I haven't checked to see if they are uh, on Instagram. They could be. They they do exist on Pinterest. Um which is interesting. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's very unique. It's not something that we we expect, I guess, because we're always no, like, no. It's it's uh it's really really different, but not in a not in a bad way. It's just it's just something we're going to need to get used to. Uh, I think I think Alex, for lack of, because we don't have a, a category for. You know, for agave spirits, by default, we would have to nominate this as an agave spirit category. Yeah, you know, I, I do, I do want to nominate it. I love the packaging. I, I like, the, the, I like the packaging. Nomination. I, I think it's unique enough that that it merits attention. 
Okay, um, that that's my bottom line. It for yeah, some I think people, it's a really interesting spirit. For yeah, for some people, mezcal is an acquired taste, or sotol is an acquired taste, and and um, I think the the more we experiment with this, the the more we'll we'll will come to expect a certain type of flavor profile. This is this may be the first run of this batch, so it may change. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a it's a it's really see if it, some more info. There's not there's not much info on that. No, no. There it, it's an unusual spirit with it. it, it I I I think I think the best thing to do is to toss it out to the audience out there. If you've had it, give us your thoughts, your you know what you think, uh, in the comments below. Subscribe to our to our YouTube, and you guys tell us because maybe you guys in the Twin Cities are are more aware of this than we are. Um, the fact that they're that they're in Southern California, we need to find out who carries them, Alex, who who their distributor is, if if they even have one. Yeah, um, I, I like it, Mike. It's different. I I think it's it war it, it merits attention. I think and so. It merits attention. It, it really no, I does. Just, I just found something here. It says they've got 500 years of tradition. So I I the let's see. It says uh, there are a couple of agave spirits that we've tried to to get on our show. Um, that um, that have you know f mm. five or six generation distillers who have who are making things in in a in a in a traditional way yeah but they're not tequila right and and I've been chasing you know those brands for a while but um, I give these guys credit they they sent us samples almost like right away this was one of the first ones that we received in in 2015 so. I say let's nominate them and let the you know, let the public decide. I I think I think if you've had it, and you want to tell us what you picked out of it, by all means do so in the comments below and let us know. I think we're going to nominate it for packaging and also for brands of promise in the in the agave spirits category. We'll just go with what they're telling us. Um, they even state a gnome, um, and and I, I'm gonna I, I don't know. How can they have a no? Well, I don't know. <laughs> On the back of the bottle, it says Nom E M O. Looks like O one two S C F one two thousand six. Where'd you get that? It's right there on the back. On the back of the bottle. Yeah. On the label. Uh huh. Oh, there it is. You're right. Yeah, Ravel Spirits is out of Napa, California. You know, this is interesting. I'd, I'd be I'd be interested to know if uh, Morelos has a, a designation by the government for their agave spirits. I don't know. Why else would they have a known? I am I am completely in the dark. Founded. Yeah, I I think um, it's it's worthy to to check out. Yeah, I think so too. I I think it's uh, uh, it's, it's it's real reminiscent of a of a sotol. I would maybe call it like a light sotol um, because of the earthiness. Um, you do get some, so I did get some citrus in, in there and the earthiness, like I there, mentioned. There's a sweetness too, Alex. There, there is a sweetness, there's yeah. There's a sweetness to it, but there's, there's something a, in the retronasal that, that's really, right, right now for me, indistinguishable. Yeah, and I actually, get, I actually am getting a little bit of agave, almost like a dirty agave. <laughs> that makes any sense, you I'm know, because of the, earth, the earthiness, you know, like an earthy, yeah, yeah. Well, earthy. Well, the, you know, that's what I'm saying. This could be that what we're tasting is the tuar of Morelos, right? That we're not used to because we've never had it, right? And because it's out of the out of the denomination of origin, it's out of the designated area. We don't know what this tastes like, so, you know, you guys tell us. But that's our take on Ravel. Ravel Avila. Blanco on the Avila. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. I'm Alex Perez. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. Thanks for watching, and as always, sip wisely.